Next, we're taking a look at the ulna. So again, I have a right ulna in front of us, keeping with that trend going of rights. So we're taking a look at the bony landmarks to help us orient this bone and what is anterior versus posterior and proximal versus distal, medial and lateral. So the very, very obvious one to take a look at is this proximal end of the bone. You can easily discern if this is a left or right just from a view of this proximal end. So discussing proximal end versus distal end, just to start off, we have this huge opening notch right here, which is going to be articulating with the humerus. We have a nice round olecranon process. So that's pretty easy to identify versus on the distal end, you have a head, a nice round object with a spike coming off of it, otherwise known as the styloid process. So sitting this bone down, looking at the proximal versus distal end, let's take a little bit closer look at this proximal end. The notch, which is for your trochlea of the humerus, is going to be sitting in here. So that is the anterior aspect. The olecranon here is the posterior part of it. So we know this is the front and this is the back. But now we just need to know what is the medial versus the lateral. So one of two landmarks will help you with that. If I do a gentle turn here, we can see a notch on one side. But if I go to the other side, it doesn't exist. So this is actually the notch for articulation with the radius called the radial notch. So the radius is the lateral bone and the ulna is more medial, so this notch points out or lateral. The other thing to look at on this is it actually has quite a nice sharpened border that runs down one surface. So I'm going to bring this a little bit closer to the camera for us. If I do a slow rotation of the bone, it's fairly smooth. However, there's one sharp edge that you're starting to see right in there. That is known as the interosseous border. So in between interosseous bone border, which means this is in between the radius and the ulna. So I would either use this radial notch or that interosseous border to help determine what is left versus right. And since the radius is lateral and the ulna is medial, both of those landmarks need to point out. So again, we're looking at a right ulna here. Those are the best landmarks to help you identify left versus right. Starting our discussion of the bony landmarks, and we're going to start at the proximal end of this bone. We're going to go through each item one by one, and we're going to bring in the humerus for articulation as well as a little bit of the radius. So I'm looking at the proximal end of the bone as just previously discussed, and we have this nice, easy to identify notch. This is for the humerus, so I'm gonna bring in the humerus at this point and show you the trochlea of the humerus and the trochlear notch of the ulna. So this bone sits nicely together here, and this is gonna be helping you with flexion extension of the elbow. So those two things quite easily you can see that articulation, we have this spool-like structure of the trochlea and it kind of matches to kind of concave with a slight impression up the middle um, of the notch here on the ulna. So that is that bony landmark. This beak-like structure which is sticking up, so the notch being here, but this projection here is called the coronoid process. So previously discussed, if you've been watching this video, you've heard conoid tubercle coracoid process and now the coronoid process. So we have multiple things that sound similar, but this one is pretty unique kind of for the ulna. So we have this nice sharpened projection sticking up, which is a multi-muscle attachment. I'm not gonna name all of them, but you will can stay tuned or look up some of those bony landmarks. And that kind of helps on the front articulation here. I'm gonna bring back the humerus. So you can see that's creating a nice kind of front wall to it, and that's going to go into the previously discussed coronoid fossa of the humerus, that coronoid process of the ulna. Okay, let's take the humerus out of that. So we have the notch, we have the coronoid process, and as I come off of that and start heading distally along the bone, you can see it's quite rough in this area. So roughened bone often means a muscular attachment, and this is known as the ulnar tuberosity, which is the insertion of your brachialis muscle. So coronoid process, again, this projection sticking up here versus the ulnar tuberosity just in front of that more rough patch of bone right in this location. Okay, I'm gonna be turning this bone slightly lateral. So 
orienting yourself with the anterior view and as I roll it out to look at the lateral aspect again we've discussed that this was for the head of the radius so that was called the radial notch I'm just going to pop a radius in here just for your view so the head of the radius is going to sit nicely inside this notch and so as you do supination and pronation you can see how the head of the radius can spin inside this location helping you since the ulna really does not move in pronation supination all of that movement is coming from the radius um, this is where a portion of it since we have two radial ulnar joints this is known as the proximal radial ulnar joint and that is the radial notch of the ulna now taking a look at that radial notch if you look towards the bottom i can see this nice sharpened edge right here so again this is the front on the ulnar tuberosity then i have the radial notch but this sharp edge right here is known as the supinator's crest so this is the attachment for one of the heads of supinator or one of its origins i should say and so running my nail just beautifully along the supinator crest of the ulna that one's a little bit of a trickier landmark to see when the bones are connected because it's in between the radius and the ulna so again, if I put these two together, that crest is going to be hard to palpate and to be able to identify. Lastly, on the proximal end, quite an easy landmark for us to see is the posterior, this very large olecranon process. So huge muscle attachment for your triceps. Again, I'm going to bring in the humerus here and I'm going to pop that trochlea inside its fossa. And you can see that during extension, this olecranon process is going into the olecranon fossa. So oftentimes this is what you're leaning on. This is the bony part of your elbow. And that is again, your olecranon process right there. As I said, the insertion for your triceps. Okay, so we've discussed this proximal end of the bone. I'm not spending a lot of time detailing all of the surfaces and edges of the ulna. It can get a little bit tricky and I'd like to focus on more of the bony landmarks. So we're kind of just going to skip along past all of this shaft here, and we're just going to look at the distal end of this bone. So you can see we have a nice round head, which is this large projection here. It's quite easy to find on your own body. Um, but then off of it is this styloid process. So I'm going to change that angle just a little bit for you. So we have a sharpened projection going out towards your carpal bones in your wrist, known as the styloid process versus all of this here was the head and if we have a head we most likely have a slight narrowing just proximal to that being the neck so i'm just going to orient this bone again on the table we have the ulnar tuberosity and the coronoid process facing up we have the head at that distal end and so you can kind of see that it's a little bit tricky to see where that styloid process is and oftentimes since the radius is out it is more of a medial and posterior bony landmark into your carpal bones and at the wrist joint there. So this is going to conclude all of the bony landmarks that I'm going to discuss about the ulna today. Moving on to the radius, we're going to discuss how this anatomically sits in our body. So I currently have a right radius in front of me, and you're currently looking at the anterior surface of it so the head of the radius up at this part which i'm currently tapping with my fingers is the head which is the proximal end and then down at this end having this styloid process and a little bit wider almost a triangular shape is the distal end of the bone we'll take a little bit closer look here you can easily see the head and that roundness to it as well as this concave so the proximal head and its articulation when the fulvia with the capitulum and then we have this bumpy process here called your bicipital tuberosity and then on the other end of the bone we have our styloid process and again articulation with the carpal bones so just going through how this sits anatomically the head is proximal the styloid is distal but looking at the surfaces you have a nice smooth anterior surface and when i roll this over to the posterior surface you're starting to see a whole bunch of little bumps and grooves along there so this 
largest one sticking up is often referred to as the dorsal tubercle of the radius. So dorsal being in a better sense posterior in a lot of cases. So this is the posterior aspect of the distal end of our radius. And we have this styloid process to the lateral side and we have another notch here specifically for the head of the ulna on the medial. So just looking at just this view alone, the smooth anterior surface, the lateral styloid, and the medial notch for the ulna, you should be able to determine if you have a left or right radius in front of you. All right, moving on to individual landmarks, we're going to take a look at the proximal end of this bone one more time. So we have this nice head of the radius, which has kind of an interesting shape to it, in that this roundness is what's articulating in the notch of the ulna, but then we also have a concave surface here for the capitulum. So I'm just going to bring in the humerus just briefly, and we're going to take a look at the capitulum, which is a convex round shape going into the fulvia capitis of the radius. So this allows for you to do supination and pronation in that component there, but it also allows for you to go through some flexion extension. So it's kind of unique, almost a ball joint um, for the capitulum and then that impression of the proximal end of the radius known as the fulvia capitis. This convex surface of the outer radius is going to go easily into the notch of the ulna. So it's going to be a little bit tricky for me to articulate here, but you'll get that kind of point as this is sitting in there. And so this supination and pronation action from that convex surface of the radius matches the concave surface of the ulna. So the head of the radius, our proximal landmark, as we're working our way down, whenever there's a head, stereotypically we have this neck, so just a slight narrowing of the bone, head and neck. And then we come across a fairly large bump. Again, depending on the bone and the plastic you have in front of you, this can vary in size and actually typically be a little bit rougher than this one here. But this has two names. One, the bone it's named for, otherwise known as the bicipital tuberosity. Otherwise, what goes into it, sorry, biceps being going into it, bicipital tuberosity. Otherwise, this is the radius, the radial tuberosity. So one of those two names, either bicipital or radial tuberosity, biceps brachii inserting and radius, therefore the radial tuberosity. So this bony landmark, pretty obvious to see. It's in an anterior view, sticking up and slightly more medial. Just note that if you were to go into pronation, that bony landmark starts to disappear. So that's why this bone can be pulled up by it, by biceps, which helps you do some supination. You can see a little bit of a sharper edge here as I'm working my way down the shaft. So this part of the bone can orient yourself, proximal and distal, styloid being outer. This is the interosseous border of the radius. So that sharpened border matches and faces the sharpened border of the ulna. The two sharp borders face each other, the ulna being medial, the radius being lateral. So they're facing internally or interosseous to each other. And sometimes a little bit harder to see, but again, if we look at a half, let's put it this way on the table for a second, proximal and distal. If I were to look at a halfway point on the lateral aspect, kind of like the humerus, you might see it's slightly bumped out here. And in some cases, it'll be a little bit of a rough patch. So we almost have this oblique line that helps you orient sliding along this anterior part of the radius and it ends here in what is known in some texts as the pronator tubercle, the insertion of pronator teres. So you may see a slightly raised area or pointed out in certain textbooks. So that's in the mid lateral surface of the radius, right in this location here. Okay, finishing down the shaft, it's gonna to start to widen at the distal end. So again, we can start to see some different shapes on the distal end of this radius. The anterior is nice and smooth, but if we were to roll it over to the posterior surface, you're starting to see some indentations, some grooves almost cut out, and then one large bump. So this bump is traditionally known as the dorsal tubercle, but depending on your reference, you might also have this as Lister's tubercle. 
So we're going to call it dorsal tubercle for now. So this is kind of in the middle of that posterior radius on the distal end. It's quite an obvious bump that kind of sticks up. And if you were to look on either side of it, we have some grooves. So these grooves are the muscles on the extensors, whether it's in the extensor digitorum or it's one of the deeper extensors for your thumb, they're running up into the hand on either side of this. So this tubercle is not necessarily a muscular attachment, but it's almost a separation for our tenons on the extensor surface of our forearm going into the hand. So it kind of helps keep the tenons in place so they're not kind of snapping back and forth. A couple more landmarks on the distal end here. We have this very obvious styloid process. So again, both of our bones in the forearm, the radius and the ulna have styloid processes. The radius is a little bit larger here versus the ulna one there. So that's kind of a helpful hint is the distal ends both have styloid processes. And on opposite the styloid over here on the medial aspect of the radius, we have a notch. Well, similarly on the ulna, where we had a notch for the head of the radius, we now have a notch on the radius for the head of the ulna. So the head of the ulna is going to sit in there. So as we're doing our supination and pronation, I should be technically moving the radius and not the ulna, you can see how this head sits inside that notch as the radius spins on it. Okay, so this notch is the notch of, for the ulnar or ulnar notch of the radius. And again, for that distal ulnar articulation. So we have two parts to that radial ulnar joint, this being the distal radial ulnar. The last thing we're going to take a look at is the very distal end of this radius. And you might just gently see that there's two kind of hollow spots and a slightly raised area in the middle. So we have two carpal bones articulating with the distal end of the radius. The more lateral, the one closer to our styloid process is for the scaphoid. So in this area here, you have an articulation with the scaphoid and the more medial one closer to the ulna, but still articulating with the distal radius is for lunate. So these are the two carpal bones that are articulating with the distal end of the radius. We have scaphoid here and we have lunate here. So that is basically concluding all of the bony landmarks that we are going to discuss of the radius. But the last thing we wanted to kind of do is to articulate these three bones together as best we can. So I'm just gonna turn the radius this way. We're gonna bring in the end of the humerus into the camera view, as well as the ulna. So I'm gonna pick up this ulna and set it in place here. And then I'm gonna grab the radius, which we're again, we're looking at that anterior view. And so that's sitting in here. So you can see the radius is articulating on the distal end of the humerus on that capitulum, as well as it's articulating inside the notch for itself of the ulna, the radial notch of the ulna. You can see the trochlea is sitting inside the trochlear notch of the ulna. And so as we do flexion extension, which is going to get a little bit tricky. We see if we can lift these two bones up. Both of them are moving together as we do flexion of the elbow. And a little bit tricky for me to do, but we'll see what we can do. And if I turn this over, this is the act of supination currently here versus pronation as this radius itself starts to twist and turn over. So the ulna stays in place but it's the radius that's doing that movement. So it really doesn't matter where your radius is in space, it's still able to go through some flexion extension, which makes that quite a unique elbow complex. All right, that's gonna conclude our discussion here of the radius and most of the bones of the upper extremity. However, we will have a carpal bone special video coming up.